The immediate former governor of Mombasa County, a one Mr. Ali Hassan Joho, has become a serious expert at being an escapist of Mandamano. Ever since Ray Lodinga lost the August 9th general election, he has been away from this country. And I've seen several reasons as to why he was away. At one point, there was a rumor that he had gone away for further studies, that he was doing a course on leadership for one year. At another instance, I heard that he was ailing. I think he went for surgery or something of that kind. In fact, that second one is more closer to the truth because it came from his own mouth when he was in Kenya during Ramadan. Well, let it be known, first of all, I have been unwell. I have uh, gone through some surgery. I am recovering. And that is the only reason as to why you haven't seen me uh, where you're supposed to see me. But I want it to be known that I subscribe 100% fully, completely, the ideology of Azimio. But either way, true or false, Ali Hassan Joe found a very good way to avoid all the mandamano that was taking place in this country. And for a good reason, his family owns a port that unilaterally handles all the cargo that goes to South Sudan. And I mean all the cargo that goes to South Sudan. You can imagine the volumes that that country needs as far as sugar, rice, vehicles, weapons, and everything else that you can imagine. All that is handled by a port which is owned by Joho's family. So that's why by all means he stayed away from politics. He wanted to continue having this nice deal for his family and not be in the crosshairs of William Ruto and his government. But suddenly, South Sudan has written an official letter to the incumbent government of Kenya asking that we stop monopolizing the cargo that traverses Kenya headed to South Sudan. This letter was of course seen by the Business Daily, which is more inclined to keep an eye out for such kind of things. Now in this video, I want us to look into why South Sudan is opting to end the monopoly of Joho's family. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first reason why South Sudan is coming out seeking to end this deal in between them and Joho's uh, port is to strengthen diplomatic ties in between the two nations. South Sudan knows full on well that at the time they entered into this deal with the Joho family, Joho was in bed with the incumbent government. That was during the handshake period. So it made sense for them. They also believed the opposition candidate is going to win and that would prolong the good deal that they're enjoying with the Johos. But because the opposition lost the elections, and Joho is a non-affiliate of the opposition, the South Sudanese government does not want to attract the ire of the incumbent Kenyan government. And what better way to dispense away with that than by ending any trade deals with affiliates of the opposition. So that is the first reason that I'm seeing these guys might be looking to end that particular deal. The second reason is that it could be a competitor has offered South Sudan better rates. And suddenly South Sudan sees the sense in ending the monopoly and being able to get in business with other ports or diversifying who handles what. So that if we can get a better deal in port A, that is where we take our business. Or if port A handles a certain cargo better than port C, we will diversify how our cargo moves to our country. I believe there is a better deal they've seen and that is why they are trying to get out of this Joho deal, which they penned and the government corroborated. So for them to even get out of it, they need the Kenyan government to ratify that move. Otherwise, they can't unilaterally leave the port deal. They signed a contract. The only question is, will President William Ruto and his government honor this request by South Sudan? Or will they hold them into account and basically say, yes, we'd like to help you, but you signed a contract with Joho. And it was ratified by the incumbent government then. Also, I don't know if there's a release clause that favors Joho in the event they prematurely terminate the deal with them. Perhaps they'll pay them damages. But for some reason... They are not writing to Joho's port, they are writing to the incumbent government. So that kind of lets us know that these guys, their hands are tied. There is a contract that was signed and only the Kenyan government can get them out of it. They can't unilaterally do it. So all eyes will be on Moses Kuria to see what his ministry is saying because his ministry is the one which is involved 
with this particular issue. Now the third reason I can't rule out intervention from the Kenyan government. Perhaps someone from the Kenyan government just slipped a request to South Sudan so that it can look like this request was always coming from South Sudan. Because I've seen a serious effort by this incumbent government to end the monopoly that most of the people in opposition have been enjoying. We saw the Kenyatta family enjoying a monopoly in the milk subsector. Regadi Gashagwa is doing his best to end that because the farmers are being conned, the milk is being bought at poor prices and they're not getting what they deserve. We've also seen this government trying to end the monopoly in the gas industry that Raila Odinga has been dominating. They recently allowed a Tanzanian billionaire to come and set up a plant in Kenya. Now also could they be trying to end this monopoly in the port by Ali Hassan Joho so that others can also have a chance to compete for some of this market share that is available at the coastline. So I can never rule out the fact that it could be an inside job by the government as that now the only person who knows what truly is going on in that particular issue is Ali Hassan Joho but he's not active in politics and I don't think he's going to make a comment on this. Now, what in the world is going to happen if this deal falls apart? I believe it could lead to the return of Ali Hassan Joho to opposition politics because this is the only thing that is keeping him away from the opposition. He's making so much money and like I've always said, everyone has a price, be it in politics or anywhere else. Everybody has a price. And the price to keep Ali Hassan Joho from opposition politics has clearly been met through this single solitary deal. So take that away and perhaps we will see a return of Ali Hassan Joho into opposition politics. I don't know. Time will tell, but as of now, South Sudan is not happy with the services of Joho. Clearly, that's why they want to end that monopoly. But as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.